We're together 24-7. Yes. And we're still in the honeymoon phase. So I think that that counts for something. We are always seeking to bring the very best out of each other. And when we are front of heart, then that's what allows that to unfold. You intend the best for me, and I intend the best for you, no matter what is going on. That is an intention of seeking to understand versus uh, reacting back to. Bring love forward and start with the belief and the knowing that the person has your back. If I do wake up and I'm not kind of like immediately like, oh, this is a great day. I do find myself kind of caught more in my head than in my heart. Maybe they're having a bad day as well. And their actions or their words are not representing their true heart or their true feeling. We all have those days. So after 10 years of being together, getting ready to celebrate our 10 year anniversary, we have taken some time to really think about what it is that has made it a 10 year honeymoon instead of the old adage that we really want to start to debunk, which is relationships take work. And one of those things is assuming positive intent or knowing that you intend the best for me and I intend the best for you, no matter what is going on. But how do we do that? How have we consistently managed to do that throughout our relationship to keep us in this little honeymoon phase that we're in? And I feel like there are five tips that we could give people to like bring that back to front of heart as well as front of mind when you're in those moments where you start to go, oh, they did that on purpose. Come on. There's no way that that was accidental. They're out to get me because it's so easy to get to that point, right? If you're having a bad day, but how can you remind yourself quickly and go back to that positive intent? I think you you hit it on an explanation of front of mind, or sorry, front of heart, uh, <laughs> um, and and that's so important because when we are, if we if we have front of mind, to me that's when we start to dive into the negativity. We start to dive into that feeling that someone's out to get me, or you know that there it's an attack or something like that. But when it's front of heart. You know, I, we know each other's heart it's, and, and we've talked about this before in previous podcasts, even about, you know, how do we grow together and through personal growth in our relationship and how do we run that in parallel? And to me, it's a, a lot of those principles can be kind of brought in this as well. And that's that front of heart. And I know that we are always seeking to bring the very best out of each other. And when we are front of heart, then that's what allows that to unfold. And in a, we're going to speak specifically about romantic partnerships, mm -hmm. but this really does work in any kind of relationship that you have, whether it's with your children or your parents or friends, because if you're truly connected to someone, rarely are they going to be out to get you and desire in any way to hurt you intentionally. Maybe. Maybe, but that would be the rare case. So assuming positive intent or knowing, most of the time assuming, I just don't like that word anyway. But if we know that they have positive intent, right, that they're not out to get us, maybe they're having a bad day as well. And their actions or their words are not representing their true heart or their true feeling. We all have those days. But if we're connected heart to heart and we're engaged in that space, then we're going to settle into that knowing versus that negative brain bias that can take over in a moment where it, we go into that negative spiral and we suddenly start to think that the person who loves us the most the person who cherishes us the deepest would suddenly somehow turn into our enemy instead of our greatest ally and be out to get us somehow. Right. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're used to the concept with, you know, innocent until proven guilty, right? 
And so concept. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's not always the societal approach, but there's a reason why that was put first. And that there's a reason why that is, is initially integrated in that sense. And so I think it's a great way. I mean, that is love first. That's love forward. And that's, that's what's important. That's what we're talking about here. If we are seeking to be, bring, bring awareness into building a long-term relationship, then it needs to be love forward. Yes. And I think that really gets into that first step, which is bring love forward and start with the belief and the knowing that the person has your back, yes. that they mean well, and that they're doing their best from whatever space they're in in the moment, mm. right? Again, we all have days where things are not going great for us. And you and I, we do our best to vocalize that to each other. Yeah. But we're not perfect at it. Like if you're in the midst or in the throes of a really crappy day, you may not be able to go, you know what, babe, I'm in the midst of a really crappy day and I might not be like perfect at the way that I'm talking right now. So please forgive me if it seems like I don't have positive intent. Rarely are we going to be great at doing that. Yeah. But if I'm able to use that heart connection and take the 98% of the time when we're together and you show me that you have my back, and I start with that belief and that knowing of our bond and who we are, then in that rare little percentage of time when your words and your actions are not showing me that, it has nothing to do with me. Yeah. And I can believe in all of the other time, bring that belief into this moment and hold steadfast in that. Instead of then turning around and attacking you when you're already in the midst of having a bad day. That's beautiful. I think one of the kind of practical ways that we, that we apply that in our day to day is when we first wake up, one of the first questions we ask is, you know, how are you feeling? You know, how did you sleep? You know, what are you, do you feel like you have a headache this morning or are you feeling off or are you feeling energized? You know, we really kind of tap in and seek to understand where each other are. Now, how we wake up might not be how the end of the day. And so we understand Things that. Things go crazy. Yeah, Come on. sometimes that happens. But I, I think just kind of reflecting on it, I feel like that's a really good practical application to this first step and just constantly gauging. And then throughout the day, you know, we, we do ask, you know, hey, how's, how's, how's your day been going? You know, what's been going on? How can I support you? You know, and so it, it's that little bit of awareness and knowledge to the other person that, you know, Hey, I've got your back. And that's why I'm asking. I'm not asking for any other reason other than just to, to be and to know. And so if something does happen and you have voice to me or I have voice to you, you know, Hey, oh man, I, I really didn't sleep well last night. I might be a little off today, or, you know, it's just something like that. Then it kind of gives us a heads up and then we can allow for a little bit more space, a little bit more grace. And so if something does happen later in the day, we're not taking it personal. We're not like, Oh, well, you know, everything seemed great in the morning and now she's just attacking me or vice versa. It's like, yeah, how to, no. <laughs> it's like, wow. Okay. You know, you know, maybe it's just something that we can kind of work through or talk through and it doesn't need to be addressed directly in this moment. And, and so I think that's, that's a huge, just great way to just gauge in the morning first thing. And there's kind of throughout the day, you know, everyone, not everyone is like us where we work together all throughout the day. So it's kind of easy for us to check in. We're together 24 <laughs> seven yes. and we're still in the honeymoon phase. So I think that that counts for something. Definitely. And we call those our pulse checks. Yes. I mean, we talk about being heart connected and those are our pulse checks where we make sure that we're still aligning. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. And it's proactive instead of being reactive, which is a key part of this, knowing that we're not out to get each other. Because another tip number two is realizing that our brains tend to go into negative brain bias, right? It's a human thing. It happens. But we don't have to give in to that. We can recognize it's a trait, but then use what you were just talking about, those pulse checks or that heart connection 
to say, I don't have to allow my brain to overrule my heart. My heart knows this person. And so I can settle back into my heart and make choices from that heart-centered connection to not flow into the negative thoughts. Oh, I caught you. You're there. Yes, I could react and say, I don't care if you're having a bad day. Your bad day doesn't have to become my bad day. How dare you have your words or your actions seem like you don't have my back or you don't have positive intent? Of course, it would be very easy. But if you're already having a bad day, how are you going to respond to that? Right? We're going to go down a path that isn't going to benefit either one of us. But if I can take that moment and go, wait a second, pulse check this morning. And clearly this morning, you actually said when I asked you, how, how are you doing this morning? How are you feeling? You said, I don't know. Which to me is one of the best answers in the world because then, you know, tons of room to figure it out. (laughs) But it also let me know that any action today or any words is you discovering and has nothing to do with me. But I have to then constantly return to my heart-centered space and that pulse check and not go to my negative brain bias and allow that to take over. Yeah, that's really good. And I, I appreciate you stating that and being aware and recognizing that it is a, a discovery. Because yes, I mean, I'm, I'm sure we've all been there when we're Sometimes we don't even realize we're having an off day. Sometimes we, it's just, there's so much going on. We haven't really thought about whether it's a good day, a bad day, an off day, an on day. It doesn't, you know, those, that's just not really in the flow. And you're like, you're in the middle of a conversation and you're kind of realizing, oh, you know, I'm, I'm really not feeling that great. Or just the response back from, from you, for example, like when we're talking and I'm like, oh, that's not, that's not the response I, I anticipated. You know, maybe maybe I'm not communicating well because I'm having more of an off day than I realize. And so that discovery aspect is, is really great. And uh, to me, that is heart forward. That is an intention of seeking to understand versus uh, reacting back to, uh, you know, discovery is always, it's it usually the word discovery has a very high vibrational aspect to it. Right. Um, where it's, um, you know, and I think this is to go to call back to the beginning of the podcast when you said, and I don't really like the word assuming, usually assuming has kind of a, a negative connotation to it or a negative or even lower vibrational frequency to it. So I think holding that, holding that space of discovery and, and allowing it to unfold is, is very hard forward. Yeah. It's just, when you hear certain words, they make you feel yucky, mm-hmm. right? Whether you realize it or not. And so I, that's where I go from. Like, there's nothing wrong with the word assume. It just doesn't feel awesome. And, you know, you hear the whole, (laughs) when you assume (laughs) comment enough and you're like, yeah, it's true. It's really true. Um, so I don't want to assume or even presume. I want to hold my belief or I want to hold into a knowing until the knowing shifts. And it is the same with, um, anything other than if you feel positive when you use a word use that word if you feel yucky or then don't use that word right unless you're explaining yucky things (laughs) then then that's kind of ideal (laughs) yeah absolutely uh and i want to um highlight something because and we talked about a practical application and our practice for the first one and maybe in this one something that really helps me because if I do wake up and I'm not kind of like immediately like, Oh, this is a great day. You know, um, I do find myself kind of caught more in my head than in my heart. And so one of the things that really helps me is I'm like a really visual person. And so when I can visualize, you know, kind of this white light energy that kind of circles around my head, right. It circles, circles, circles. And then I kind of almost see it like, Kind of like those visuals where it's like, you know. <laughs> There's a visual yeah. that goes. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's for the audio side too. <laughs> and, and so it is that down. light waving yes, through your body? Waving, <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> so I can connect with yeah. the visual. Think sci-fi. Like, and it goes down from my head and into my heart. 
and then and then it kind of moves it's kind of slow at first and then faster and faster and faster until you know kind of like like a fan right you can see it and then when it goes so fast then you can actually see right through it like when i see when i get to that point then i feel like all that energy that was stuck up in my head that was keeping in my head blocking me from my heart has now moved from my head and down into my heart and then it's like a reset and then i can kind of move forward from there Awesome. Then you can care bear that stuff. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All the sound effects today. <laughs> that is a huge yes. part of it too. We do a lot of sound effects. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but that also gets us into tip number three, which is talk less and listen more. Huh? What? <laughs> what? So if you're getting to the point where you believe in positive intent from the other person, you know, maybe a sound effect can shift you into listening instead of can shock you into listening instead of talking so much. Because often we do end up talking instead of can listening to what the person is saying. And we get back to that those words that maybe don't feel so well, but we presume and we talk at someone that is our partner or in any other relationship. So when we talk less and we listen more, we get more information. Then we can ask clarifying questions when we feel like maybe our partner isn't having our back. But if we presume that we know that, and we just pounce on that, we might not have all the information either. So listen fully, and then we can ask clarifying questions. Yeah. I love that. Again, that's a, each one of these steps, it's important to recognize, you know, how they facilitate a heart forward approach. And what is the, the saying? You have two ears and one mouth. So listen twice as much as you speak. Okay. You know, that's always a good one. Right. <laughs> yep. And so, you know, that to me is, is, is really important. I mean, everyone, we talk about this all the time in our, in our podcast and just in general in life, um, that everyone wants to see, be seen and heard and gotten. Right. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rosie for that. And, and it's so true. Like that's, uh, super important. And so when you do take the time to listen, that is a heart forward uh, practice to let your partner know that you see them and that you hear them and that you've got them. And, and that's, that's so key. And it seems so simple, you know, which, which is so funny, but the reality it's, it's so powerful. And often the, the most simplest things are the most powerful. They are the most profound. And so when we can show that we are actively listening, and we are understanding we're not as you're saying uh presuming or think oh i think they're going to say this so i'm going to get ready to to fight against that and and then you're just completely paying and not paying attention and then most likely they're not even going to say what you think and so then you're just way off and then now you're not communicating and then that's where miscommunications come and then that builds into confrontation and then that builds into fights and and then it becomes something that it just never needed to be in the first place yes which is why tip number four goes with tip number three so strong, which is being present in that conversation as you're listening. Because you start to read between the lines or fill in your own context as we're talking about going along with that, presuming you know what they're going to say, you filled in that story for them. If you're not present and listening and that creates such a huge breakdown because as you said, they, chances are I'm not going to say what you think I'm going to say because what you think I'm going to say is coming from your brain and your past experiences. And I may not have even been in those past experiences with you. So you're bringing all your past into the present moment some of which I may not have even been part of. So how am I going to be able to say anything related to that if I wasn't even in those experiences? Maybe what I'm going to say has nothing to do with anything that you've ever experienced before, but you won't know that if you're not present with me. That's right. 
And I think this brings up kind of like another practical application of this, of like, how do I, how do I under, engage in this in, into my day to day? And I feel like this is where the miscommunication happens. You know, we talk often about thinking versus feeling, right? And in communication, oftentimes we're not necessarily communicating what we're thinking. We're actually communicating what we're feeling. But if we're approaching it from this thinking standpoint, that's where like that cross happens, right? And so if you are, if, if thinking is AM and feeling is, you know, FM, then, you know, which one are you tuning into? And so if your partner is actually talking through things, and especially if it's, you know, feeling like it's a share, it's an emotion, it's a, you know, this is where I'm at right now. And then you, you're too busy thinking, it's always, it's going to be a miscommunication, um, most cases. But if you tune in from the feeling standpoint, which is again, activation, activating heart forward, right? Then you can start to understand that when you are present, you're, you're in the heart, you're in the moment, you're in the feeling and you don't, we don't think feelings. We, we feel feelings. You feel them. We're connected. That's, that's connected. Right? That's why people yeah. say, oh, I feel that. They don't go, oh, I feel that. You know, <laughs> and I'm hitting my head for those, for those, for the audios. Um, like in, and when I say I feel that, like I'm touching my heart, that's like a very common body language thing that, that people do. Right. Like I feel that. Right. And so you, to me, that's, that's just such a, a key aspect in terms of the practicality and in the day-to-day -day practice of engaging this heart forward aspect in communication. So when your partner is speaking, you know, maybe first start to understand from the feeling standpoint. And if they are, then if you realize through the con conversation that they are sharing their thoughts on something then pop up and, and meet them in the thinking aspect, but it's really hard to go the other way. I've definitely found that. For me, it's really hard to go from thinking down into the feeling uh, because it just, it, to me, it just takes a lot more effort. So if I start from the feeling, then I can just pop quickly up into the thinking and meet where we're at. Then it's just an easier transition. I love that. And when we're talking about listening and then being present in the listening, listening isn't only about receiving the auditory aspect of that listening is also about body language mm -hmm. right which is so much more of the communicative process than what somebody might be verbally saying so you are giving those signs about when we're feeling something we might be putting our hand to our chest when we're thinking you know we might be rubbing our head a lot mm -hmm. if we're present in the conversation and someone is communicating with us they are going to, we're looking for positive intent, right? We're desiring to connect with them on that positive intent. You can look at your partner and know if they're truly angry with you or if something is brewing inside of them that is creating a disconnect in their day, oftentimes by truly listening to their body language, by being present and observing what is going on in the conversation? Do they look defeated? Do Are they rubbing their head a lot, meaning they're so lost in thought and very disconnected f from what you're talking about? It may mean that there's nothing to do with you right now. Mm -hmm. They're so lost in whatever is going on in the moment that they don't mean to be disconnected from you. They just have a lot in flow. So how can you then ask those clarifying questions that bring you back into connection? Mm -hmm. Then you can convey what you desire. But if you start throwing things at them, when you're not connected and you are in that feeling space, then you're likely not going to get to the response that you're truly seeking. So that listening does come a lot from understanding the nonverbals that are part of your conversation. I love that. And one of the best, I feel like one of the best um, clarifying questions that we've integrated into our conversations uh, is, you know, are you looking for a solution or are you looking to be heard? Yes. And, just to express. Yeah, or just to express, exactly. So there's multiple ways you can position that question. But usually a solution is more thought process based. And so if someone, like you're, let's say you're sharing, you're a feeling, and then I'm just approaching it from the attempting to create a solution, that may not be what you're actually looking for. That's an assumed solution. 
And the, and the reality is that you might be looking for a solution, but that solution is actually one of me just listening and just being there and holding space or loving, or maybe it's just a hug. Maybe it's just, Hey, I, I'm with you. I, like I can, if I was going through that, I would feel the same. You know, sometimes it's just, just that humanity aspect of it. Like I, I see you're, you're being seen, heard and gotten, not just throwing a solution back at you. And so I think that, that clarifying question of itself can kind of pull us back into the present moment and let the other person know that we are receiving. And then it, it allows for a structure for where the next steps of the conversation could or could not go. And it could ideally, I, I see like what it does is it actually limits a lot of miscommunication uh, after that question. Yes, so much. And tip number five really goes around that feeling part of it, mm -hmm. right? Even when you're keeping at heart that your partner is looking for the positive intent, right? They don't, they're not intentionally doing something. It doesn't mean that you're not going to feel hurt, right? So that doesn't mean that you disregard if you feel hurt or you feel angry or any of the other things that can come up in the course of whatever is occurring. But it's how you express that in the course of your discussion that will really take you to the next level. There are plenty of times when you're having an off day or I'm having an off day and the other person feels hurt in the process, but it isn't you that's hurt me. It is the course of the actions given where you are in the day have created a feeling of hurt. And so I can still understand that you are intending positive intent. It is not your intention to purposely hurt me. But as I share with you, I'm not attacking you. I'm sharing the actions given where you are right now in your day are causing these feelings of hurt. And I know that you love me and you would never purposely hurt me. But I want to share with you that the actions or the words that you're choosing to use right now are making me feel this way. They're triggering me, right? It's me that's feeling triggered. So I would like to find a way to approach this in a way that doesn't make you the bad guy, but also doesn't make me feel triggered and hurt. How can we do that together? Because I know you, I know your heart, and I know our connection, and I know you would never desire to purposely hurt me. Yeah, that's so, so well said, so beautiful. And, and I always appreciate when you approach it from that way, because uh, it's always kind of like a, a shock. You know, it's like, oh, wow, I didn't realize I'm coming off that way. Yeah. And oftentimes and if it is a mis it's you, it's a miscommunication in the fact that maybe the frustration that I'm feeling might be coming through the words and out to you and directed to you, even though they're not meant to be, it's just like, I, I, you know, it's just like a feeling. And, and if you were to ask me and it's like, oh no, like, I don't, I don't feel like I did that at all, <laughs> you know, but, but, you know, and, and I've definitely, I mean, we've all been on the, both sides of that equation, if you will. And, and you know, seeing someone like, oh yeah, I just, I know they didn't mean it in that way. And I can understand where they're coming from. And, and we all need an outlet. You know, we all need a way to express energy because when it gets built up, built up, it just turns into an explosion and that's even worse. And so, um, approaching it from that way helps kind of redirect the flow and say, oh yeah, you're right. I didn't mean it to come off this way. Um, let me reset and let me state it in a way uh, that's conducive to both of us because, you know, the reason why I'm talking to you is because I actually really need you right now. And I need that help. I need someone to listen. I need someone to understand where I'm at. I need to be seen, heard, and gotten in this moment. And so, yes, let me, let me restate in a way that is helpful and is in that state of love and connection that really supports and uplifts and withholds the flow and, and expands our, ourselves through this process because, Ultimately, it, no matter what 
either one of us are feeling, we both can learn and grow from it. Yes. And it also takes away the, you're a bad person because you chose to use this word or that word, or in one moment you did one action. And you talk about this a lot, right? None of us are bad because of an action we've taken. Every action, every word, every choice, it's part of how we learn. And in a loving, connected partnership, that is a discovery, right? We're supposed to be safe to discover things about ourselves. And if we take away that safety because we don't feel like we can do these things, have moments, have off days, then that whole journey of self-discovery through connected, combined discovery, it starts to break down. And we have to find ways to keep reinforcing that. So this part of it, this knowing that your partner that anyone you're in a connected relationship with, whether it is family members or friends, that they have positive intent, even on bad days. And if you feel like they don't, then talk it through with them and listen to what they have to say. Because the worst thing you can do is harbor ill will, because that's going to break that relationship down anyway. And if you find through that discovery process, they don't have your back, Well, you can do something about it to fix it, or you can make a different choice, but you have to figure it out. Yeah, that's well said. Um, And ultimately, if if you do recognize that you're harboring ill will towards multiple, one or more relationships in your life, usually it might be because you're harboring ill will towards yourself. And so when we can kind of bring that awareness And recognize that, you know, it's, we can only meet other, everyone else where we are to ourselves. And so when we can shift that and, you know, if we're kind of like the concept of, you know, walking on eggshells, right? I don't want to walk on eggshells. I want to walk on a really fluffy carpet. (laughs) It's a lot nicer. It feels safer and happier and, and it's so much better. Like, you know, if we can create that within ourselves, then it's really a lot easier to create that uh, to those around us. Yes. And this is where I'm going to talk about silence your inner critic. Yes, absolutely. Because that's the purpose of that book, Mm -hmm. right? We all have that inner critic that makes us feel like just wants to shove us down and make us small. Mm -hmm. And so many of the tools and techniques that we talk about are in there in such a fun little narrative spin where we're becoming the superhero of our own lives as we take that super villain. And I mean, if you can't, tell that we're very into (laughs) superhero (laughs) kind of things. It just allows us to have a fun journey with this because that's what life's supposed to be. Yeah, it's going to be hard. We're going to have our challenges, but we can always rise up. So if you are interested in learning more about Silence Your Inner Critic, you can pop on over to silenceyourinnercritic.com and sign up for an early registration. We'll send you some details and you'll get a bunch of free gifts from me. And if you are interested in learning more about how to have connected relationships of any sort, we have a ton of content out here on the Heart Leader podcast. So start to explore. Until next time, we look forward to chatting with you right here in the community. 